Well, again, I want to welcome everybody here today, and I want to just thank, thank you, Chris. That was an amazing, uh, amazing song. It's like you were reading my mail, <laughs> okay? Uh, it's like, like I sent you my message, and you wrote this song just to match my message. You know, like, don't you, don't you love God? Don't you just love the way he works? I, I, it never ceases to amaze me how God just brings everything together. And he does that in like these little ways. He does it in big ways, but he does it in all the little ways. And sometimes we miss the little ones. We miss them and we take them for granted and we think that, oh, it's, you know, that's cool. Yeah, it's all right. But you know what? Those little things, they add up and they make a huge difference in our life. And we got to realize we need to come to realize that God is so big in our life. He's in every detail of our life. Every detail. Amen? Amen. We need to be excited about this. This is a good thing. Well, I want to welcome you all again today. I want to welcome everybody online as well. Um, last week, I talked about our kingdom walk and the stages of that walk and what it's like to be a Christian and walk the Christian life, the Christian walk, okay? And that we do it in stages. It happens in stages. It teaches us, and it grows us up, and it matures us. And I refer to the stages as the process. If you were here for that message, you would have remembered that, at least, that it was all about the process. And the process, that it's the process that God takes us through for the sole purpose of getting us into right relationship with him. The process is, is for the sole purpose of getting us into right relationship with him. Now, when we say right relationship, right relationship, that can, be, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people, all right? So we're going to talk about this today. We're going we're gonna to dive a little deeper into this. I used the analogy last week of, of basically meat going through a meat grinder to make hamburger as an example of the process, all right? And it's because it makes the meat more versatile. It's, it, it's, we can use it it's because it's been processed, all right? You can add things to it. You can mold it. You can... It, you can do things with it other than just steak or something like you make meatloaf. You can make lots of things. I'm sure you can think of lots of different recipes that you can do with, with hamburger. But that's it. It's because it's gone through the process. Now I know that ground beef is not a pretty analogy. Okay, I get that. I know that it's not. It, it's not something we like to think about. And some of us get a little squeamish when we talk about stuff like that, all right? When we talk about fleshy things, all right? Because let's face it, the flesh is messy, right? The flesh is a messy thing. It can be a messy thing. And this thing that we call our flesh, that, is, that we walk around with, uh, is just like that. And it can get messy too, all right? Life can get messy. That's why the Bible refers to the flesh over 315 times, all right? If you read the Bible, and if you're reading the right translation, all right, you're going to read it as the flesh, and it uses that for a specific reason. Why? Because the flesh is messy, all right? That's what it is. It doesn't sound good, all right? The flesh, just to say it, the flesh. It, doesn't, it just doesn't sound good, but there's a reason why they use it, all right? The word flesh bothers us so much that a lot of Bible translations stop using it, and they translate it over to, uh, to the sinful nature, our sinful nature, because we didn't like saying the word flesh. So now we say the sinful nature. Well, I got a problem with that, all right? I have a problem with this whole sinful nature thing because we don't have two natures. We don't have two natures. Yes, thank you for the hallelujah. All right? We only have one nature if you're in Christ. All right? And that's Christ in us. All right? One nature. It's all about kingdom. 
First, 2 Corinthians 5, 16, 17 says, Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Yeah, it uses that word flesh right there. It says, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer that way. I added that. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation Old things have passed. The old self has died, in other words. Behold, all things have become new, and we have become bought and paid for. Did you know that? You are bought and paid for. All right? I talked about this in another, another sermon. Where we, were saying, we are not, we are slaves, okay? But now we're not slaves to the world. Guess who we're a slave to? Christ. That's right. We, are a, we have been bought and paid for by Christ. So we are a new creation. Christ in us, we belong to him. All right? Mull that one over for a while. Our identity is in Christ and in Christ alone. We are not spiritual schizophrenics. All right? We don't bounce back and forth. Well, well I'm in Christ today. Well, <laughs> geez, I've been walking in the flesh in my sinful nature. You know, it's like, oh, I better get over here. Okay, I'm doing good. I'm doing all right now. Now I'm in Christ again. Oh, I'm feeling like I'm having a bad day. I think I'm in the, now I'm I'm in the sinful nature again. It's rising up. That isn't the way it works, my friends. You are in Christ. And Christ says that it is done. It is finished. All right? We need to, we need to come to believe this. We need to come to get this in our, that it goes from our head down into our heart. You see, our spirit is renewed and it is alive through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what happened, all right? This is one of the most fundamental truths that we as Christians need to understand is that Christ is in us. The old man is gone. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is now no longer I that live. It is Christ who lives in me. In me. So if Christ lives, and it's now the life I live, I live through Christ who lives in me, who loved me and died for me. Somebody say amen. Okay? This is good news. This is good news. We need to be hanging on to this. That is our identity. That is who we are. But anyway, that's not where I'm going today. (laughs) You'd almost think I was, right? But I'm not. I'm not going there today. We've talked about this so many times, all right? Today was just a freebie. I was just giving this to you so that just to remind you about what we've talked about forever here at CityGate Church. And I know that, but it's always good to to go over it and remember it and solidify this in our heart. So last week I talked about the process And today, I want to talk about the purpose of the process. The purpose of the process. So this is kind of like the second message to the first message, all right? Because I know that there are people here that need to hear this. And I know it because the Lord told me, number one, and number two, you told me. Because when I talk to some of you, I know in your heart it hasn't gone from here to here, okay? And we want it to go from here to to hear. Amen? Because when it does, well, you're going to find out. So stick around, okay? Life just gets messy. It does. I don't think there's any of us here that has not gone through the messiness of life at one point or another, okay? We've all experienced it. And here's the thing. We don't do messy very well, do we? We don't like messy, you know, I don't like messy, you know. I like working on my cars, and I like doing things like that, and, you know, on vehicles and stuff like that. But you know what? I don't like to get messy, and I hate it. You know, it's like I can't wait to go in and have a shower and get all that grease off of me, you know. I like the outcome, but, but the thing is, is we don't like messy in our life. It's just not something we do very well. When things get messy, our focus quickly shifts from God over to our circumstances. You know what I mean? It shifts from God to our circumstances. From our circumstances to me. To me. 
Now all of a sudden the focus is on me. From me to why? Why? Oh God, why did you allow this thing to happen in my life? How, don't, don't you love me, Lord? How could this thing happen to me? Me, your favorite son, your favorite daughter. And then it goes from why to discouragement. And then it goes from discouragement to loss of hope. And then it goes from loss of hope to isolation. All right? Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And once we've spiraled down that far, the enemy is laughing with delight because he knows he has us right where he wants us. But here's the thing. Our God is a good God, and he's a powerful God, all right? He's an all-powerful God, and he never, ever takes his eyes off of us. He just, he's just waiting for us to look up. That's all he's doing. He's waiting for us to look up out of our despair, and he's waiting for us to surrender those circumstances to him, whatever that circumstance is in our life. And when we do, then the Lord just, he just reaches down, and he lifts us up. He pulls us up out of the mire and he says, okay, let's work on this. Let's see what we're going, what, let's see what we can do with this thing that's happening in your life. And he renews our strength. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Man, that's what I want. I want to be able to walk and not faint. I don't want to be walking and then walking into doors and things and fainting and all of that nonsense. I want to be able to move forward in whatever it is that God has for me, whenever it is that he wants me to move. And when he says move, I want to be able to go. Amen? In Psalm 103, verse 5, it says, Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like eagles? Who wants their youth to be renewed? And of course, you young ones, you're already, you're, you're okay. But us older ones, you know, we, you know what? Hey, listen, I don't, want, I, I don't want to be an old, old man. All right? I don't want to be an old, old man. I want to be a young old man. All right? I want to be renewed. I want God renewing me every day. All right? I want to be running past a lot of you young ones. Okay? I want you to be keeping up with me. All right? Because I'm going to lead the way. Well, God's going to lead the way, but he's going to do it through me. And he'll do it because he'll renew my strength. He will renew me. He says it right there. He'll renew my strength. And he'll renew it like the eagles. Okay? Like eagles. Why does God use eagles as, 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 uh, in these scriptures? Why is it eagles? All right? Because he wants us to fly. God wants us to fly. He wants us to soar. He wants us to see things from another vantage point. All right, his vantage point. And when I think of eagles, I think of, I think of power. I think of being, I think of freedom. I think of strength, all right? I think of being the head, not the tail. I think of being in the lead, not behind. Eagles, are, that's what eagles are. They're majestic birds. And they, they just, they're, they're beautiful. That's who we are, my friends, that's who we are. That is who God created us to be. And God loves us so much. He loves us so much that he will even allow us to go through many things to help us get to that reality. He wants us to get to this realization, this reality in our life. He knows that if we never experience hardship in our life, that we will never, ever grow. We won't grow. We'll never, we'll never really depend on him. We'll never acknowledge that he is our sustainer, our provider of life. And we'll never, ever reach that, that level of relationship with him that he so desires for us to have. This is what he wants. He wants us to enter into this rich, rich relationship with him. We, we'd simply coast through life 
thinking that everything that good, that is good, that happens in our life is because of me. Me. Look at all that I have. Look at everything that's going right in my life. You know what? That's all, that's all me. That's all because of what I've worked hard for everything I have. I should have all of that because I am so good at what I do. Just look at everything I have. You don't have all that. I do. You see, we get so caught up in the I, we forget that every single thing that we have in life, everything, even the job we have, Everything is from him. Everything. We just need to be good stewards of it. All right? Because all of those things that we think we acquired so wonderfully on our own, all of those things can be gone in a flash, in a moment. All right? So praise God for everything you have. All right? Praise God, because he is the one who gives it to us. He is our sustainer. Now, where was I? <laughs> I do this every time. God's ultimate purpose through the process, his purpose through the process, is to get us to look up, to look at him to acknowledge him, to see him as our provider and our sustainer and our life, to have a personal and meaningful relationship with him, for us to release all of our circumstances. Did I say some of our circumstances? No, he says all of our circumstances to him so that he can do what he wants with it, so that we can experience the freedom, the freedom that he that can only come through our Lord and our Savior, Christ Jesus. That is his ultimate purpose through the process. That is the purpose, is to get us in to right relationship with him. But let's break this down a little bit more from here, okay? Now, disclaimer, I'm warning you. Some may find what I say next to be extremely offensive, all right? So, but I'm asking you to bear with me till the end if you want the blessing, okay? Are you with me? All right. Can somebody man the door? Just make sure in case anybody tries to, can you do that for, for me, Adam? Okay, thank you. Anybody that tries to leave, just tackle them. Just, that's it, okay. Because they're the, probably the one that needs it the most, all right? Okay, here we go. You ready? God's ultimate purpose in our life is not our happiness. <gasps> oh, wait, it gets worse. <laughs> it's not our finances, our money. It isn't that. It's not even our health. <gasps> Jerry, that's sacrilegious. <laughs> That's, that's hypocrisy. Okay, well, hang on. Hang with me, okay? The ultimate purpose in our lives, his ultimate purpose in our lives, is our right relationship with him. And I'm not just saying relationship with him. I'm saying his, the right relationship with him. All right? That's it. That's what his purpose is in our life. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, but... I know God. I know him. I believe in Jesus. And the Bible says that if you believe on him, that you will be saved. Well, that's correct. It's true. The Bible does say that. It says in Acts 16, 31, it says, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Okay. Well, let's look at the context of that, all right? Because we want to look at that a little bit deeper. Because we... We, if this is it, if we hinge everything on this, we got a problem, all right? Because Satan and all the demons are going to go to heaven. They're all going to go to heaven. Why? Because they believe that Jesus is alive. They believe that Jesus lives. He's there. They know that, all right? They, they agree with that. They don't like it, but they, but they know it. So if they know it, 
then they're going to heaven too, according to that verse, right? But let's read another verse for some context. Romans 10, verse 9, says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, everybody say Lord, Lord, and believe in your heart, in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay? Now that changes things up a little bit. All right? There's a huge difference between simply knowing about Jesus and confessing that Jesus is the Lord of your life. Thank you for the amen. There's a big difference. To have a Lord over your life would require you to submit or surrender everything that you have to that Lord. That, don't blame me, that's, that's just how it works. All right, if somebody's going to be a Lord of your life, everything has to be submitted to your Lord. All right? Lord in the dictionary means someone or something having power or authority or influence over a person or a master over you. So the Lord of our life can be a person or the Lord of our life can be a thing. Okay? All right? We could... It, it all depends on what, where our focus is in life. What, is the, what are you primarily focused on in your life? Because I'll guarantee it, whatever that thing is that you are focused on in life, that is the thing that you have placed as Lord of your life. Okay? Well, nobody's left yet. All right, so this is good. All right? Many of us have confessed that Jesus is the Lord of our lives, but have we truly, truly given him all power and authority in our lives and surrendered everything to him in every area of our life? Think about it. Don't answer. All right? Just think about that. Many of us, we have, many of us have some areas in our life, all right, that we haven't done that. And I don't know one single person in the world that I've met yet that has surrendered every single absolutely everything to God, all right? And that's okay, all right? I'm here to tell you, don't sweat it, all right? God understands that. He knows that. That's why we go through a process. That's why we go through this process. That's why it's because God has a purpose in it. He's getting us somewhere. He's got a goal. He has an end goal here. Because God knows that's all part of the process to reach, to get us to that ultimate purpose. Right relationship with him. That's what God is doing. And unlike us, God is very patient. A lot more patient than we are. Because we want to get there yesterday. We want to be all fixed up right now, all right? We want to understand everything right now. And God is saying, "Uh uh-uh, sorry, doesn't work like that. You're going to need to go through the process to get to my purpose just like everybody else. It's just going to take some time, all right? So we're all at different levels. And you know what? This is a good thing to remember. It's a good thing to know because you know why? When you get this, you have more grace and mercy for those who may not quite get it is at the level that you've got it. All right? We need to be gracious with one another. We need to be patient with one another the same way that God has been patient with us. Amen? So look over to your neighbor right now and say, I'm, I'm going to be patient with you. All right, you guys heard everyone say it? All right, okay. He knows that as long as we live in our fleshly bodies that we are going to have to depend on him. He knows that. Why? That's why, he's, that's why it's part of the process. All right? Because it's to reach the end goal. All right? But through the process of our dependence on him, he will accomplish his ultimate purpose of bringing us into that right relationship with him. Amen? 
Amen. Because God knows that when we are in right relationship with him, now listen to this, when we are in right relationship with him, our happiness won't be the focus of our life. Did you hear that? Our happiness won't be the main focus of our life because he will become the main focus. Whether it be through our finances, whether it's through our relationships, whether it's through even our health, it won't matter. He will become the main focus of our life. And I was thinking of something as we, as we were singing your song, and it was, like, it, was, it was like God gave me this revelation. It was that even the, even the blessings, even the things that we desire in life, all right? Even the promises of God in our life can become our Lord. Did you get that? Even the promises that he's given us in life can become, we can make them our idol. And it's, that's how sneaky the enemy is. And we'll spiritualize it, make it sound all spiritual. But you know what? Really, it isn't about God. It's about what we can get from God. All right? And, but here's the thing. You can't fool God. He knows our heart. He knows what it is that we desire the most. Are we desiring what we can get from him, or are we desiring him? And that's what he wants. That's right relationship. That's the relationship that we want to have with him. But none of those things will matter because they won't be the focal point of our life any longer. Amen? He will. God will be the focus. And when Jesus is the focal point of our life, we begin to realize that, guess what? Jesus was all we ever really needed. You said it. It's like Chris went in and just grabbed my notes and he just extracted that whole thing right out of there. It's like he was reading page seven. (laughs) You know? It's like Jesus is all we need. He is the only thing that we need. And when we realize that, Man, there's power in that. There's power in that. Because people can't take away something you don't have. When you've given everything to him, guess what? you got nothing left to lose. When everything belongs to him, you have nothing to lose. And a person, a man who has nothing left, or a woman, has nothing left to lose, you're dangerous. You become dangerous. Because you have nothing that you're trying to protect. All right? You're not protecting the flesh anymore. All right? And in time, we begin to see our circumstances. They start to change. They start to shift because he becomes our focus. And all of a sudden, our finances seem to get better. And then all of a sudden, our relationships start to get better. And then all of a sudden, our health just seems to get better. All of these things start to happen. Why? Because we put him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all of these things will follow. Amen? Then all of these things will will follow. But they no longer will be the focus of your life. They won't be the focus. And you'll be praising God left and right. Because he is worthy of the praise. And you'll start to see things happen in your life like you've never seen happen before. Our focus now remains on him. And our attitudes shift from me, Lord, why me, Lord, to how do you want to use the thing in my life, Lord, to bring glory to you? How do you want to use this thing that you've allowed in my life to bring glory to you? How do you want to use this thing in my life that you've allowed in my life to bless other people in my life? How can I be a blessing in this? God, show me. Show me. I desperately want to know. And God just says, rest in me. Just rest in me. And you'll, and you'll know. And they'll see me in you. And then... They'll want me too. And they'll be looking up, just like you're looking up. You see, this is what we need. This is what we want. This is what God is desiring. That is the purpose for God in our life. That is the purpose why why God allows us to go through the process of life. All right? 
So don't, don't, don't worry about the process. God's doing something amazing in it. Amen? All right, you still with me? We're getting close, all right? The ultimate purpose is, to, is for God to get us out of the way, to get us and our things and our circumstances out of the way so that he can bless us and other people in our lives. Now, I'm not quite done shocking the socks off you yet, all right? There's still a little more, a little deeper that we got to go here, all right? So, one of our biggest hindrances in reaching the ultimate purpose that God has for our lives is this nasty, nasty little thing that we call pride. Pride. You know what? I think the word pride is almost as bad as the word flesh. All right? Because that's where it comes from. All right? But it's this nasty little thing that we call pride. All right? Pride is a killer. All right? And pride is sneaky. Very sneaky. All right? It can be overtly obvious, but it can also be covertly hidden. That's how pride works. If it can't get you by being overtly obvious, it'll get you the other way. It'll make you all nice and humble looking and, 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 and submitted. But there's this thing that's happening in the background that pride is doing. All right? And we need to be praying that God will show us what that is. We often think of pride as self-promoting and arrogant. It, ha- we have, it has to be the best. Pride has to, it always has to be right. And it really doesn't care what anybody else says or thinks. It's going to do what it wants because that's the, that's the overt kind of pride. All right? But pride is a lot sneakier than we think. And it also disguises itself as false humility. All right? And it's once you start to recognize it, it's very, very easy to pick up. It's very easy to see. It's based in self-doubt. It's, it feels inferior to others. All right? It fears what others think and say of them. All right? But either way, it's all based on self-focus. Either one is based on self-focus. It's all about self it's all about inward thinking, all right? It's all about me. Me. That's it. It robs us of our victory, and it steals the abundant life that God desires so, so greatly for us. Because until both forms of, of this pride thing is dealt with, pride will continue to block us from the ultimate um, purpose that God has for our life. All right? So it needs to be dealt with. There's two things that need to happen with pride. The first thing is that God has to give us the revelation truth of what's going on in our life and how pride is operating. That's the first thing. And we need to be praying about it. We actually need to ask God to reveal that to us. Because if we're not willing to look at it ourselves, if we're not asking him to reveal these things to us, it ain't, it's probably not going to happen. Because we won't listen to other people when they tell us. All right? It has to be Holy Spirit revealed. All right? So we need to ask God to reveal whatever it is that's blocking us, and he'll reveal it. The second thing is that needs to happen is we need to have a heartfelt, genuine repentance for whatever that area was. All right? And once those two things have been looked at after, once those two things have happened, the enemy is in great trouble. You know why? Because the enemy no longer has authority in that area of your life. Because you've dealt with it. All right? This is so important. If we, we need to understand these two steps here so that we can move forward in the freedom that God has for us so that we can soar like eagles. All right? This is, this is the first two steps. All right? We go from self-centered to Christ-centered. All right? We go from why me to God use me. There's a difference. Then we go, we don't, we don't, it's not what I don't have. It's Lord, 
use what I do have. We go from beating, being beaten down to soaring like eagles. That's what I want in my life. I want to soar like an eagle. And I know you guys too. Jesus quotes, in, uh, he quotes Isaiah 61, verse 1, in Luke 4.18. Wrap your mind around that. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and to recover the sight of the blind. How many of us were blinded? We may not have been blinded physically, but I'll tell you, our spiritual eyes were blinded. And, we, and then I believe that this is the blind that he's talking about here. He may be talking about physical blindness too, but he's also talking about spiritual blindness. And he said, why? To set, the liber- to set at liberty those who are oppressed. In other words, to set the captives free. To set the captives free. I'll tell you something, guys. I ain't no captive. And neither are you. And we're set free. All right, and we need to believe this. Thank you for the one amen over there. God's plan for our lives is way more than just a ticket to paradise. Okay? It's way more than fire insurance. All right? It's all about relationship. Our Father God is about relationship. This is not just a, um, you know, the, the... the judge looking down on us and pronouncing what we should do and we shouldn't do. That is not the way our God works. Our God is saying, come and be with me. Come and get to know me. Get to know who I am. Get to know how much I love you. Get to know how much I care for you. I have things for you that you cannot imagine. All you need to do is surrender your worries, surrender your cares, surrender your circumstances to me. And let me be the one to work through your life. And guess what? I'll do things that you cannot even imagine. I'll take you places that you never ever thought that you would go. And I'm going to, I'm going to, ha- I'm, I'm going to make a difference in other people's lives because of you. Because of me in you. And how, what they're going to see because of your obedience to me. That's what God, that's the kind of God that we have. That's the kind of God that we serve. That is the Lord of our life. The Lord of our life doesn't want to control us and manipulate us and tell us what to do and what not to do. He wants us to just want relationship with him so that we in our heart and in our soul will want to be like him. And if we want to be like him that much, guess what? All of those things that he would like for us to do, we're going to want to do. Not because we have to do it, but because we just love him so much. And we know how, how good those things are going to be for us when we're obedient to him. There's a huge difference, my friends, between law and grace. A huge difference between law and grace. His desire is for us to really understand the depth of his love for us. That's his purpose in our lives through the process that he has each and every one in. Through that step-by-step uh, process of revealing his glorious truth, all right, in every area of our life. And when I say every area, guys, I mean every single area of your life. He wants to be there. He wants to be a part of it. The question is, are we willing to surrender our lives to the process that God has to accomplish the purpose that he has in our life? That's the question. Are we willing? Do we want him bad enough? Do we want him bad enough that we'll allow him to be the Lord of our life? Are we willing to lay all of our concerns, all of our burdens, all of our hopes and fears, all of our expectations, and whatever it else it is that is in your life that is blocking you from him? Are we willing to lay that down on the altar of surrender? 
on the altar of surrender. Like, you know what? When you put an animal on, on, on the altar and to sacrifice an animal, you got to tie it up because that thing's going to run. Okay? All right? That's the nature of the flesh. It will protect itself. But what did Jesus do when he went to the altar, the cross? When he went to be sacrificed, he didn't run from it, my friends. He ran to it. And he went up on it willingly. And what he's asking is he's saying, are you willing to lay your life and all your burdens and all your cares on the altar of surrender so that I, not me, him, can be the Lord of your life? So that he can lavish you with the blessings and his love and do amazing things in your life. Because here's the thing. When you do, the weight of life falls off of you. Okay? And when the weight of life falls off of you, you will soar like eagles. You will see things from a whole different vantage point. You're your continence will change. Your attitude will change. All of these things will change, all right? And you'll see more clearly. Do you know, can you ever, can you imagine what an eagle sees when an eagle is soaring over the valley? Its vantage point has got to be amazing, all right? And that's what God wants for each and every one of us. He wants to open our eyes our spiritual eyes, so that we can see the truth that is contained in the word of God that he wants to release through us. That's his purpose. That is the purpose of the process that we're going through in life. So, my friends, don't worry about where you're at. Don't worry about what you're going through right now in life. All right? All you got to do is surrender it to him. And allow him to love you and just lavish on you. And he will, I guarantee it. And you, are, you will see changes in your life. Your continence will change. Your attitude will change. All right? And you, guess what? You will be, you will, other people will see this in you. And you will be a blessing in their life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your truth. We thank you, Father, that you do have an amazing purpose for our life. Father, you want us to walk into this revelation truth of, of, of this relationship, Lord, that you want with us. Father, I pray a blessing on each and every person hearing this message today, Lord, and those that may hear it later online. Father, I pray a blessing over them that they will grab a hold of this revelation truth, Father, that they will in some way, Lord, through your help, through your Holy Spirit, uh, that they will make that decision and just surrender everything to you, Father, that you might have your way in their life, Lord, that they would, they would just experience your blessings, but more importantly, Lord, that other people will be blessed by them as well because of who you are in them. Lord, you are a good, good God, Father. You love us. You care for us. You want the best for us. Father, I pray, Lord, that we all start to see this, Lord, that this truth goes from our head to our heart, from head knowledge to heart reality, Father. Lord, to an experiential reality in our life and in our walk. Lord, that we can be better husbands, better wives, better Christians, better neighbors, better everything, Lord, because when you're in us, Lord, things are better, Lord. When you are the, uh, the Lord of our life, Lord, life is just better. Father, bless everyone today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.